Not guilty. Greiner is guilty. He shot and killed an unarmed man. That jury acquitted him. But I didn't. And I'm not about to. Hey, John. John! Not guilty! Not guilty! I say he's not guilty! Jerry's turned to do! Not guilty! Greiner's not guilty! Hey, John. Where are you going? Hey, Mr. Deegan, why not? He's gonna get himself a gun. I'll bet you. I'll bet you. There's gonna be a lot of people unhappy about that verdict. Unhappy? More like wild. Have you seen Jim Fisher come out? No, no, we, uh, we were looking for him. Boys, you're blocking the doorway, please. Spread out. Go on home. Go on about your business. Now, I'm bringing Will Griner out here, and I don't want any fuss or disturbance. You understand? Please, folks, move on. Go ahead. Oh, Ben, I'd like to see you and Hoss over in my office in about 10 minutes. And if you see Jim Fisher, bring him along, will you? All right, we'll see if we can find him. Excuse me, people. Why don't you boys check in the silver dollar? Right, Bob. Oh, there he is. Hey, there he is. Hey, there he is. Hey, there he is. Murder! You murder! Murder, please! Yeah. We can't have that. Over here. Reiner, you step this way, please. What for? I'm going to put you in protective custody. Yeah, Roy, wait, uh... wait, wait. You can't put me in any cell. No one, you have no right. That's where you're wrong, Mr. Griner. I can and I will lock you. Roy, do you know what the blazes you're doing? Yes. I'm putting your client in protective custody. Thank All you. right, you're the lawyer. Speak up. Tell this old fool what he can and Roy, can't I'm do. I'm going to have to remind you that my client has been tried by the court and acquitted, and here's an order, Satan. You're releasing. But the circumstances... You heard him. Now, give me my gun and let me get out of here. Reiner, I'm doing you a favor by holding you in protective custody. Now you heard that crowd outside. Forget right? the crowd. Hold I can take care of my myself. Boy, my client appreciates your offer, but he prefers to go home. Not yet. Come on. Roy, you're buying more trouble than you can handle. Do you know what you're doing? I think I know what I'm doing. I'll thank you for this. I'll see that you get thrown out of office. Now you get back to that judge, you get a writ, you get something, but you get me out of here. Now! came straight over here as soon as the judge turned us loose. Well, well, well. Good old George. Afternoon, stud. Well, I'm real glad to see you got the place open up again. That's what we all got to do. Pick right up where we left off. Business as usual. I just wanted to be sure you didn't have no hard feelings. Get out, George. Now, look, John. You think it was easy? There wasn't one of us on that jury that liked it, but there was nothing else we could do. Get out now. All right, if you're going to act that way. You too, start out. I thought I might go out. No, you can earn your beer money, money somewhere else now. Get out. Well, looky here. Now, I was only doing my duty. You ain't never gonna see me in your barbershop ever again. Me and a lot of other people. Run. We'll cut our hair with sheep shears. Run, you yellow dog, run! You
Roy, don't make me go get a writ. It's just going to make you look bad. Never mind how it makes him look. Get it. You got to release him. Harry, I've asked these men to come over and see me. I want to talk to them privately. Please sit down, gentlemen. If it concerns my client, Roy, I'm going to have to stick around and listen. I guess that's all right. Ben, at any time before or during the trial, did anyone try to get either of you to change your testimony? Not me. No, not me. Tig, they're trying to frame me. You let them know I'll have your hide on the barn door. No. If there was some hint that you could remember, some suggestion that maybe didn't seem important at the time, I could charge Griner and continue to hold him. Well, Roy, our uh, testimony concerned that uh, fist fight two days before the murder. Yeah. Roy, I'm going to have to protest. You've got no grounds for any of this. I say I do. Jim Fisher told one story in this office. He told another in court. Charlie Tettinger, key witness, never even went to court. Now, if somebody got to them for sure, and Roy, you know it. I've been patient with you. Now, are you going to make me go get that writ, or are you going to release him? I think Reiner should stay in protective custody. Well, you know, there may be trouble. Well, ben, the man is being detained illegally. He wants to go home. You can't hold him here. All right. You can take him. But if anything happens to him, it's going to be on your head and not mine. Ordinarily, I'd go after Jim and Charlie and shake the truth out of them, but my deputy's in Sacramento, and I just can't leave town the way things are. Why, some of those people, there's no telling what they'll do. I tell you, what worries me is Johnny Deegan. Me too, Ben. See, isn't he a, a kind of a friend of yours? Good friend. Well, then you better get to him and talk to him, and maybe you can stop trouble before it starts. Everything's going to be all right, Louise. Oh, Ben, I'm frightened. He's going to do something dreadful. I know it. Is Johnny in there? He must be. I've looked everywhere else. I've got to talk to him. Uh, Louise, why don't you go on home? I'll talk to Johnny and send him over to your house. Oh, ben, I'm worried. Come on, I'll, I'll walk you. Go ahead. Everything's going to be all right. It's a promise. Ben. Go away, Ben. You open up this door, I'll kick it in. Are you gonna kill Griner? Well, I've been studying on it. I think that's what I've got to do. I think you'll find this is all in order. I can see it in the edge of town. No need. Griner, you've been acquitted. It ain't going to hurt you now to tell the truth. Now, don't you say nothing. You did a good job, Counselor. Send me the bill. I will, Griner. And it's going to be a big one. Are you standing up for Will Griner? No, I'm not. I'm just trying to stop you from making a bad mistake. Oh, Ben, I can think for myself. Can you? Think about this. Griner will have men all around him. I suppose you did cut him down. The odds are they'd kill you. And even if they didn't, he'd still be charged with murder. And Griner just isn't worth it. No, but Frank was. 
We grew up together, Ben. He was the finest man I ever knew. Yes, he was. Yes. And he believed in law and order. He believed he could hang on to that quarter section even when Will Griner decided he wanted it. Now, that's what cost him his life. We don't know that Griner killed him. Oh, I do, Ben. The last thing that Frank ever said to me, you heard me say it in the court, if anything happens to me, look to Will Griner. What about Louise? Have you thought about her? I've got to do what I think is right. That trial was raw, Harry. You know that. Yeah, raw, but Jerry found my client in. There'll be others, and they're going to be a lot harder to convince. Go fishing, Harry. Week, ten days, till the stink gets out of town. Well, Roy, unfortunately, like you, I got a living to make. Hey, here he comes, that old devil. Will you stand clear, Ben? Uh, John, the law isn't through with him yet. Give us a chance, will you? I think we can prove that he tampered with the witnesses. You go on about your own business. Now, John, if I have to, I'll knock you clear across this room. What are we going to fight about? Hey, dang it! Well, hard right. You two tried to get me hanged. You'll find I'm not the forgiven sort. The both of you. I'll give the law another chance. I'll wait. Thank you. But not for long, Ben. Your place, don't you? Yeah, it's pretty far out, but I think we can find it all right. Well, if he's not there, you find out where he is or what happened to him, but stick with it. Will do. What if he don't want to come back with it? He jumped a subpoena. You bring him back whether he wants to come or not. All right. Well, let's see if we can find Jim Fisher. Where do we start? Let's start with the stage office. You heard me calling to you, pounding on the door. Yes. I was half beside myself, John. You, you must have known that. I suppose. But you shut me out. Why? I'm sorry, Louise. Believe me. John, I want to know why. I apologize. Can't we leave it at that? You can shut me out right here. Just as surely as closing a door in my face. It's the only part of your life I'm supposed to share. The parties, the picnics, the frivolities. That is not my idea of a marriage to you, John. Mine either. Well, is there some dark side of you you don't want me to see? Were you enjoying the notion of killing Griner? No. It's just I was thinking all through the trial. What if they let him go? And they did. If I didn't speak to you, Louise, I suppose it's because I was afraid. Of what? That you'll make me turn from my duty. What duty? To Frank. To Frank? Oh, John. Frank was a sweet, wonderful man. Beyond respecting his memory, you have no other duty to him. I do. You did. Or maybe you thought you did. Ben Cartwright and the law will take care of Will Griner properly. Now, that's that. You mean that you were worried that I could talk you out of something as important as that? Mm-hmm. All this time, and I had no idea of my power over you. 
<laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. Fair warning, the man. After I have you safely married, I'm going to make you jump. Oh, no hoops. <laughs> A ring of shambles, clothes, and gear scattered over every place. Yeah. Looks like Mr. Fisher was in a hurry to leave. Yeah. Found the Liberty Stable. Howdy. Uh, well, listen, I ain't got time to gab right now. Like you, you see, I'm getting ready to go. This isn't a social call, Mr. Fisher. The sheriff would like to talk to you. No, no, like I said, I ain't got time. I gotta get out of here. Something about perjury. Four seventy, four eighty, four ninety, five hundred dollars. Very few men in this county that carry that kind of cash around. And if they lost it, I'd know it. I can't have that. Now, Will Griner, he's got this kind of money. He paid you, didn't he? No, 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 no you're, you're wrong. You're wrong. All right. Then I'll just keep the money and try to find the rightful owner. You can run along home. Now, now wait a minute, Sheriff. No, that's all right. Go ahead. Too bad you're going to miss that little trip you'd planned, though. Sheriff, Mr. Cartwright, they'll shut me off for good and all if I don't get out of here. Who will? Well, I can't tell you that, Sheriff. I dasn't. Now, look, level with me. I'll protect you, providing you tell the truth. Well, the other night, this, this fellow, he, he knocked on my window, you know. Who was it? Well, I couldn't see. It was dark, and that's the truth. Anyways, they, they told me I'd better change my story about, you know, seeing Griner on the road just before I found Frank Wheatner dead. They said if I didn't, they'd kill me. And, and if I did, they'd pay me $500. Now, Roy, there's no identification. You can't arrest Griner on that. Yeah, but th there's more. I, I told him I might be willing to deal, you know, if I could get a sign from the head man himself. And so the next day in court, well, Griner, he kind of nodded at me and, you know, held up his hand like this, you know what I mean? I nodded back at him, and I just changed the part of my story to where I said I didn't recognize him on the road, but I did, and it was Griner. Jim, it's one other thing. Huh? Who gave you the money? Will Griner. Griner? I, you turned him loose, he come to my place and give me the money. Roy, you're going to arrest Griner, aren't you? Just as quick as I can get out there. I'm going to help you? I sure do, Ben. If you get a horse to keep an eye on Jim here, I'd appreciate it to have you ride with me and back me up. Oh, Roy, there's one other thing. Griner will probably ask you to send for me. Well, this time you tell him to get another lawyer. <laughs> I'll get horse. That'll be a pleasure. You want to do something? Yeah, sure. What you want to do? I don't know. Anything you want. We could have had a hanging. Right here in town, too. If there'd been any kind of a jury. Hey, you want to go over to the barber shop and hoorah old George Lassen some more? He closed up. He was some jury foreman. <laughs> He's probably hiding under the bed. <laughs> it was a shame about the hanging. Yeah. And Johnny Deegan. I was counting on him taking a shot at Griner. Yeah, I wonder what got into him. I was counting on it. Everything's just kind of petered out. Hey! I know what we can do. Directly after it gets dark, we'll go over to old Lady Kern's dress store, bust in one of the windows. Well, 
we can still do it. Makes it even better. Let's everybody know how we feel. Yeah. Cartwright, you never quit trying, do you? That won't do you any good, because I'll reach out and put my mark on you wherever you are. Subornation to perjury. Yes, it means. Well, it I don't means... understand what it means. And I understand it's not a hanging offense. No. Will Griner committed a hanging offense. Now we have the proof. Yes, I. I believe that there are procedures for uh, getting a new trial sometimes. Well, let's do that. Well, it's not that easy and it takes time. And uh, in the end, the whole case would depend on a man who has already proven that he's capable of lying under oath and any. Half decent defense attorney would tear him apart. I, uh, I don't think we could get a conviction. What's the penalty for this subornation thing? About five years. Oh, that's wonderful. Just dandy. Well, I, I know you're disappointed. You've done everything you could, Ben, and I appreciate that. Well, I think it's the best we could do under the circumstances. Well, I, uh, I best be getting along. No. Good night, Ben. Good night, John. We'll hang, we'll grind it from a sour apple tree. Let's break this up. Uh, Go on up the street, please. Come on, Tim. Let's go. Up the silver dollar. Have fun. Let's break this thing up. John, I want to talk to you over my office. Well, am I under arrest? No. I've got a pretty fair idea of who's responsible for that little prank, and I think you do, too. So if you just tell the boys to settle up with Mrs. Curran, I'll forget about it. Is that all you want with me? No, it isn't, John. You've got lynching in mind. Well, I expect that's a pretty common notion tonight. You've been speaking to him, Ben? Nope. He didn't have to, because I know if there's any real trouble, you're going to be right in the middle of it. Maybe even start it. But the thing that worries me is that everybody knows how I feel about Will Griner, and that might just lead to a bad misunderstanding. Such as? Thinking that I might just put up a token fight if somebody tried to take him. But I'd shoot, John. I'd shoot to kill anybody that tried to take a prisoner from me illegally. Is that all? You can just spread that word to anybody that thinks different, and including yourself. 
John. I hope you and me don't end up on the opposite sides of this. Well, now, that's up to you. We'll be on the side we've always been. The side of the law. The law isn't perfect, but where would we be without it? Ben, that only makes sense when it's just. Would there be any justice without it? John, go on home. Drop it. And that was going to be my advice to you. Ben, if it comes to the worst, I can depend on you, can I? Of course. When do you reckon little Joe and Candy will be back in town? As soon as they find Charlie Tettinger. Roy. Yeah. I think maybe I better hunt up Al Crane, see if we can round up some of the boys. Huh? Good idea. Tettinger! Found his horse. He's grazing out back. All this stuff's still in there. Well, looks like he ran into some kind of trouble along the way, and his horse came wandering back in here. Why don't we take him with us, see what we can find out? Yeah. Crane, your daughter ran over to my house, said you wanted to see me. Oh, yes, Bert. You know Ben Cart, right? Sure, sure Ben. Good to see you, Bert. Thank you. Ben here has some uh, disturbing news, and I wanted you to hear it. The lynching talk, huh? I think it's just talk. What do you think? Well, I think there's every possibility of trouble. It's like choosing the lesser of two evils, Griner or a lynching. I, I'm sorry, bad joke. What did you want from us, Ben? Well, Bert, you're the captain of the volunteer brigade. You're chairman of the Civic Fathers. There's 50 men right there. Round them up. Bring them down to the jail. And risk their necks for Will Griner? Well, with that many men, there wouldn't be much of a risk. Ben, can you guarantee that? Well, no, I can't guarantee Well, now, even if you couldn't, I don't think that my men would lift one finger to help Griner. Well, Griner has nothing to do with it. We're talking about a principal, not a man. As a matter of fact, um, the town will be better off without Griner. Well, be that as it may, the fact still remains. Do we want a lynching in Virginia City or don't we? And if we don't, we've got to do something about it. Ben's got a point there, Birch. We've got to uphold the law. One man's life, a guilty man at that, against the lives of innocent townspeople? Now, look, if Griner is lynched, they won't be innocent. That's right. And if something does happen tonight, we'll throw the full weight of the community and the law against whoever does it. That's proper and it's sensible. But we can't go around carrying guns half of the night, worrying our wives. I'll go along with that. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. So I took trouble, too. Hey! Hey, Larry! Hey, Dee! Come out and meet your new client! Dee, get around! Come on out here, Dee! We'll teach you what real law's like! Go on, get him, Pete! <laughs> Going out. This ought to get him out. <laughs> Come on. Let's go get him. Yeah. Yeah. Get up. Get up. Get up. the idea. Don't you know this is private property? You're attempting to break and enter. I'm taking you in. Come on. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What do you think it on him for, Roy? Now you shut up or I'll be taking you in, too. Oh, come on, Roy. We just have a little fun. That's yeah. your idea. Oh, hey, what is it?
Hey, John. Hey, John. You know what we done? We smashed an old Teague's window. Yeah. <laughs> Why, the grand? I don't think the sheriff be bothering us too much anymore, either. But you boys know that Griner's not going to get more than five years in prison. No. But it's a fact. Well, that ain't fair. That ain't fair at all. I mean, you see, he gets hanged. That a boy, John. But with him in jail, I'm going to need all the help I can get. Are you game, boys? Sure. We'll get you all the help you need. You yeah. got it, John. I would do it quietly. Bring them down to the store. I'll be waiting there. Can you spare me a minute, Johnny? Louise. What are you doing out so late? Is killing Will Griner going to bring Frank back? No, of course not. Then all you're doing is satisfying your own idea of revenge. No, I am not a vengeful man. What do you call it? Justice. Having a sense of what's right and wrong and living by it. I'm not going to argue with you, Louise. This doesn't concern you. Do you know that there are men in this town, respectable men, willing to stand by and let you do their dirty work for them? And, Johnny, when it's over, they'll punish you. All self-righteous and indignant. No. They are using you. You'll be destroyed. That does concern me. Ben Cartwright told you this. Yes, he did. But it can't be helped. Oh, Johnny. In Mercy's name, we've been planning a future together. What happens to that? Please, think. Be practical. I am being practical. Will Griner's beaten one trial already. It's likely he'll beat another. How can I show my face around this town with him running free? Then we will move. I'll go anywhere with you. Please. Please. It's all right, boys. Come on in. The lady's just leaving. your tools. So if you raise your right hand, please, you solemnly swear to enforce and uphold the laws of the state of Nevada to the best of your ability, so help you God? I do. I do. You're deputized. All right. Turn me loose. Let me make a run for it. Not your life. Listen, if they bust in here, make sure they get the right man. I mean, I hear Terrell all of them making mistakes and getting the wrong man. Mr. Mr. Cartwright, Mr. Cartwright, you seem to take care of Mr. Cartwright. There's a lot of excitement out there. Maybe it's been enough to satisfy him. Maybe it's all over, huh? Maybe. Do you have any luck with Al Crane? No. I don't think we're going to get any help from them. All right, John. The rest of them are gathering outside. That ought to be more than enough. All right, boys, listen to me. Listen. What we're going to do is only common justice. Will Griner shot and killed an unarmed man because he wanted that man's land and water. And then he bribed the witnesses to get himself an acquittal. Well, Griner's got to pay for that at the end of a rope tonight. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 All right, all right, now. Right. There may be a little trouble at the jail. Well, the sheriff's taken care of. Well, that might help. 
and I'll surely try to get us in without any trouble. But there's almost sure to be some sort of difficulty after it's all over, so I want us all to pledge your solemn word that we'll stick together and see this through right to the end. You get it. Now, now listen. After we've gotten Griner out, nobody is to torment him. Beyond tying him up, you're not to raise a hand to him. We've got a wagon. We'll take him down to the freight depot. There's a hoist. We'll hang him there. Agreed? Agreed. Right. Let's get on with it. Right. Oh. talk to you. That's a good idea. We've come to get Will Griner. I'm only asking you to stand out of the way so that we can take him quietly. You know I can't do that. I know there's just you and Hoss, so we'll get him. The only question is, must we spill blood to do it? Now listen to me, John. No, 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 no. I've heard enough of talk and threats and arguing. We've been friends for a long time. And we can still be if you'll just get out of our way. Can you shoot me? Because that's what it'll come down to if you try to come in here. I've already put aside everything that matters to me. I'll not let anything stand in my way. 
I'll be coming first, right in front. And you kill me. Study on it, Ben. Most of those fellas out there are friends of yours. I've been thinking on that. You're gonna have to decide what to do. I can't ask you to shoot. You don't have to. Let's go. Yeah! yeah. Next one is coming right at you. Doctor Hoss. Yeah, right away, Paul. I'm sorry, I didn't want to shoot. I didn't have any chance. The change is nothing. We'll get him another time. We found Tettinger. Shot in the back. Tettinger was a friend of mine. Jim, that's why we're asking to help us. You were both witnesses. You both saw Griner right after Wheatley's death. Well, I know, all I know is they... They told Tettinger and me if we didn't take the money, they'd kill us. So I took it. He didn't, and he's dead. That had to be one of Griner's gun hands. But they'll peach on each other, and I'll find out from them which one it was. Now, you can depend on that. What'll happen to Will Griner? I don't believe you'll hang, but I can guarantee you that he'll spend the rest of his life in prison. You can go, Jim. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Let's go I'm a little amused at my own virtue. I found this in the street. You happen to know any careless girls with uh, skinny fingers? Well, now, Candy, I just might. Ben, I don't suppose we can put all the pieces together. No, I suppose not. Maybe some of them. Why don't you start by uh, putting this one where it belongs? Roy, 
Thank you, boy. Jesse will follow him? Yeah. This time I've seen them within shouting distance of each other for a long time. Get in there. Yeah. Saw the buzzards. Thought I'd come over and see what the bad news was. Figured you'd know. What does that mean? Means the nesters aren't satisfied with one steer for the table anymore. Now they're stealing whole herds. Pretty quick to blame the nesters, aren't you, Slater? Oh, you're not much more than a nesser yourself. Don't call me that. I don't right, have to All right, that's enough thing. to both of you. Come on now. See hurt bad? Yeah, I sent Hoss for a doctor, but... We went on down the ravine. Tracks on both sides, they split the herd. The way I make it, there were four of them. Sometime last night. Well, I've had enough. Is the Cattlemen's Association going to do something about it or not? Well, we'll have a meeting tomorrow night with the Ponderosa. Takes more than meetings, Ben. The Association better hire somebody to stop this rustling, or I'm going to do it with my own men. I have to burn out every nester in Nevada. <laughs> speaking strong because I've got a lot to lose. I know the small spreads are hurting too, but where they losing one head, I'm losing four. More than 50 head a month and I'm losing men too. Now you saw what they did to Ryan out on the range yesterday. And if he dies, you can add murder to the charge. Well, we've got to do something about it. We've got to bring a man in here to stop it and I've got just the man. Yeah. You fight fire with fire, Ben. Fire is contagious. So is killing. I've seen it happen much too often. All right. It's been proposed that this association hire a range detective to eliminate rustling. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Paul, you mind if I say something? It's all right for the members of this association. Oh. Yeah. You volunteering, Joe? No, no, not me, Mr. Slater, but I think I've got a good man for the job. Dan Logan. Dan Logan? Yeah, he's a good hand, scouted for the Army, marshaled a couple of tough towns, always used his head. He's one of your own men, isn't he? Look, I just think Dan Logan would be a good man. He did a fine job in Tucson and Wickenburg. I don't care who you get. Just so as he works on a fee system. That's really asking for trouble, Frank. $300 for every rustler brought in, tried and convicted, or brought in dead. All in favor? I 
wasn't expecting you back so soon. Anita. What is it? Have you been drinking? Let me smell your breath. Not a drop. Are you going to stand there and grin all day? Well, how do I look? Any different? <laughs> what? I've been deputized, range detective. What's that? That's me, Miss Lewis. You better watch your step. Forty dollars a month. Is that all? You make that at the Ponderosa. Ah, but there's a little bonus, too. Are you going to tell me? <laughs> I get three hundred dollars for every wrestler I arrest and they convict. Is it dangerous? It's nothing I can't handle. Oh, take good care of yourself, Dad. Oh, Anita, listen, nothing can happen to me as long as I've got you. Except maybe get rich with all these rustlers running around. Oh, think of it, honey. California, a new life. Chance to start all over again. Don't expect it to be any different in California, Dan. I don't. Oh, it will be. You'll see, especially if we've got money. I don't think money can buy what you want. when I have to waste time tracking you. Hey, you and your Indian tricks. Where'd you learn that one? Yeah, Apaches down White Mountain Way. Men can learn a lot from Apaches. Yeah, man, what you doing out here? My job, picked up trailers from cows. No strays? Shod horses pushing them, moving off Ponderosa grass. Come on, let's go. That's my job, Joe. Yeah, my cattle, Dan. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, sounds good. Whatever made you give up being a lawman anyway, Dan? You're good at it. The towns were getting too rough, Joe. And the killing. You kill a man and take something out of your own life. Yeah. Well, what makes you take this job, then? Oh, it's not the same. I don't have to kill to get paid. I just bring the rustlers in and let the jury decide what happens. It means $300 to me for every conviction. I've got somebody I want to spend it on. I'm moving west, Joe. Settling down. Well, now. What do you think? Well, it could be something warm in their hands. Well, they're branded irons. Hold it right like that, boys. Joe, take a look at the brand on that cow. Ponderosa. Well, now, you boys got a bill of sale for those animals? No better than that, Logan. All right, boys, get your horses. Wait a minute, now you're beautiful. You know it. Haven't I told you that before? Yes, but I'm too smart to believe you. You don't look so bad yourself. I love you, Anita. Virginia City's in for a big treat. You never give up, do you? Do you 
want me to. Those rustlers are in trouble. You're the most stubborn man I've ever seen. You bet I am. Look, you hang on tight. I want everybody to know that you are my girl. <laughs> Anita, we're going to the Palace Hotel. We're going to order a couple of the biggest steaks in the house, and then a bottle of champagne, imported French champagne. Don't stand, please. Who does she think she is? It isn't her, it's me. You ought to know that by now. You only look at me, Dan. She sees me. Anita, I'm tired of hearing you talk like that. Don't be upset, honey. I'm used to it. Women, ladies always know. I don't know how. I'm not cut out for ice cream socials and sewing bees. They know it and I know it. So let's go back. You can't spend the rest of your life in two rooms on D Street. Why not? Because I want more for you. It won't work, Dan. I've tried it before. Now, we both know this is my side of the street. Why don't you let me go back to work? Don't you ever say that again. I'm not the kind of girl for the dreams you dream. Oh, Anita, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Listen, honey, I've got $1,200 coming for bringing the Kells brothers in. Let's go somewhere else and... we'll start all over again. Okay. You talk to me about it when you get the $1,200. Speaking for the Cattlemen's Association? <laughs> I was just wondering if you were going out again. Or did you decide to give it up? Well, the rustlers must be wondering the same thing. I'll just let you wonder, too. Will that be all, Mr. Slater? I'll leave the bottle. I'm just getting started. Another hung jury. Those rustlers were as good as free before the trial even started. You know, the judge didn't even bother to thank that jury. I guess he thought they'd get enough thanks from the Kells brothers. Well, what now? I'm going to bring in so many rustlers, they'll get tired of turning them loose. I didn't know there were that many. There's plenty. One even got on today's jury. It'll be different next time. I'll have so much evidence, the jury will be afraid to let him go. Rustlers are going to try and kill you, Dan. I know that. And with our luck, it's just liable to happen. Dan. Dan, look at me. Take a good look. I'm not worth getting killed for. If anybody gets killed, Anita, it won't be me. Drinks are on me. No, thanks. Later. What'd it be, man? Have beer for me. Oh, beer, beer. Free beer. You see Dan Logan around? Hey, he was here earlier. Took off about an hour ago. 
Any idea where he went? Well, he has a lady friend up on D Street. <laughs> I didn't know there were any ladies up on D Street. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna look for him. We need some cheering up after the verdict. You coming back? Yeah, wait for me. Hi, Joe. Mr. Hill. Hi, Jeff. Candy? Hi, boss. Jeff, how are you? Good. What do you have? Uh, whiskey, please. Well, well. Jess. Now, you're just the man I want to see. I got some business with you. Only my friends call me Jess. And it'll be a cold day when I do business with you. Yeah, well, I, I didn't say you were gonna like it. The fact is, I don't think you will like it. If there's anyone I like less than Frank Slater sober, it's Frank Slater drunk. Just take it easy. There's no sense in starting trouble. Well, uh, I'm gonna move some of my sock up on the West Fork Range. I need the water. You are drunk. Look, I'm only telling you so that you can... you can move your scrubs off of there before I move on. I'll make soap out of the first big tea cow I see. That's open range, Hill. Slater, Slater. Callum Association ain't gonna let you do that. And I'm not either. I got a lease now. Well, I'm breaking it. You cow stealing nester. Now wait right there. Take it easy, Jess. Yeah. Both of you take it easy. I'm tired of him calling me a rustler. Make your play, Slater. Or yes. back down. Slater. Don't let booze do your thinking for you. Well, what's it gonna be? It was Dan. Oh, he's not here then. Huh? Um, no, he left a while ago. Well, look, if he, if he comes around, would you tell him Joe Cartwright was looking for him? Of course. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, can I talk to you a moment? It's about Dan. Sure. It's the verdict. Yeah, I, I know he's pretty upset about it. Can I get you something? Uh, a drink, coffee? No, no, thank you. I. Uh... I miss Dan after the trial. Do you have any idea where he is? No. He went out of here mad. I've never seen him so angry. I don't know what he might do. I wouldn't worry about it. I think it'd be all right. Don't be so sure. That verdict meant an awful lot to him. He had plans, you know. Does that mean I'm going to get a chance to wear my new suit and throw a little rice? Do I look like the kind of girl you'd bring home to mother? Oh, come on, Mr. Cartwright. Don't be so uh, uncomfortable. You'll spoil my reputation. I'm supposed to make men happy. Yeah, well, uh, apparently you make Dan happy. Uh, let's say I uh, don't mean him harm. Did, did he tell you that he had plans to go away and start all over? Yeah. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit on the trail. Sounded like a pretty good idea to me. Sure. If that's what you want. Well, you make it sound like it's not what you want. I've been around a long time. It's a little bit late to start over, don't you think? No, I don't think so. Dan doesn't think so either. You know, <laughs> he, uh, took a look at me one day and saw a girl standing by a fireplace in polka dots, waiting for him to come home. What he got was me. I think you look real good in polka dots. <laughs> no, I don't think it fits my complexion. Well, anyway, it's over. The jury took care of that. Maybe I ought to be doing what the Kells brothers are doing. Rustling cattle. <laughs> 
You better be careful. Dan will be after you. Good night. Good night. Spending money, Ike. Big T brand. Frank Slater's not gonna like you. Matter of fact, you boys don't leave any brand alone, do you? Look at how you know I was here. I got my ways, Ike. Won't do any good. Jury just turned me loose again. And then I'll just bring you right back in again. Simple as that. Get these hides together. If you're gonna bring in the evidence, it'll put you away. What's up, Logan? I just brought Ike Kells in. He's dead. This has been fired three times. He tried to take me when my back was turned. But his luck and his aim were both bad. I'll be in the saloon if you want me. before I turn you over my knee. I get this straight, Billy, because I'm only going to tell you once. Your brother tried to kill me. His gun was out of the holster before he was shot. Don't make me kill you, Billy.
You reckon Logan saw us? Yeah. You think he'll take the bait? I don't know why not. A blind man couldn't miss the trail we left. Up here, boys. Well, they're up to their old tricks again, Clem. What about Barney? Why he got away? I hope you brought some evidence. I'm tired of turning rustlers loose in the cell. Well, I got a whole herd bottled up in a draw near Slater's place. If that isn't enough, they tried to ambush a duly appointed officer of the law. Looks like you need a doctor, son, and a lawyer. I'll get you the doctor. He never even gave us a chance. It's a better chance than you were giving me. Do you have to do that? Yes. It's very annoying. Well, you just have to put up with it. I'm doing it for you. Don't do me any favors. Now, why do you think I'm doing it? Cleaning your gun? It must be dirty. Well, you know what I mean. Why do you think I took this job? Why? You answer that, and maybe I'll know why you took a job hunting down men. Because I need you, Anita. I love you. Love? My love doesn't cost that much. Who is it? Frank Slater. Frank, I don't want to talk to you now. Worth a thousand dollars to you. Hello, Dan. You said a thousand dollars. It's personal. Well, I'm listening. Jess Hill is stealing my calves. Can you prove that? See for yourself, you're wearing a badge. Take a run out to the West Fork Range and look at the young stock wearing fresh brands. All right. What about the money? Dead or alive? Of course, there's, a, there's an extra 300 from the association if he's dead. I'm Dan Logan. Is your daddy home? Dan Logan, you're the one that brought in all those rustlers, aren't you? Where's your father? I'm Pete Hill. Pete? Hello, Dan. I need to talk to you, Jess. Nice to meet you, son. Same here. You go about your choice, son. What's on your mind, Dan? Frank Slater claims he's losing calves. Go on. He says he's losing them to you. Slater's a liar. When do you brand your young stock? Roundup, same as everybody. Why? Well, on the way over here, I saw a mother and a calf. The mother wore Slater's big T, and the calf was a fresh tumbling K. Now, it doesn't take much to change a big T into tumbling K. Are you accusing me? I'm being paid to stop rustlers. And I don't care if the rustlers are members of the association that pays me. Now, if you're doing it, you better get ready to stand trial or run or whatever suits you. Pete! Something wrong, Pat? Listen, Pete. I want you to ride over to the Ponderosa. Tell Ben Cartwright that I gotta see him. Tell him I'm afraid to leave. Tell him it's important. Take my horse, get there as fast as you can. You bet, Paul.
what happened. My son was shot. He was just a kid. How was he? I don't know. Doc, Doc wouldn't let me stay. How did it happen? Dan Logan put two bullets in my son's back. Did you see it? I didn't have to see it. Pete was riding my Palomino and wearing my jacket. Logan thought that he was shooting at me. Tell it from the beginning, Jess. Well, he came out to, to my place, Logan. And he said he'd found some calves that had been branded. I mean, the brands had been changed. And he accused me of stealing cows. I sent Pete to get Ben Cartwright. Just take your time, Jess. <laughs> If only I had gone myself. I found him out near that ridge on the West Fork. Ambushed. My son was ambushed. Now listen to me, everybody. Dan Logan shot my son for $300. Now you all know I don't have much. But I'll give it all to the man that brings him in. I want Dan Logan in jail. And if my son dies, God help me, I want him to hang! Stop. You see what you're doing? We're with you, Jess. I'm ready to ride out right now. No one's riding anywhere unless I say so. Now, you break it up. Go on home. If I need a posse, I'll let you know. Go on. Go on about your business, all of you. Dan Logan never backshot anybody in his life. He'd never ambush anybody. He has a girl in town. You know her? I met her. Her name's Anita. You know where she lives? Yeah. Oh, come in. You know the sheriff. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on my way to work. I'm looking for Dan Logan. Where can I find him? I wouldn't know. He's not here. When will he be back? I don't know. He left on business. What's, what's this all about? What kind of business? How do I know? Business. Uh, Frank Slater came by. What did he want? Oh, I was in the other room. These walls are paper thin. What did they talk about? I, I was asleep. And how'd you know he was here? I woke up. You heard him? No. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what I mean. What do you want me to say? Why don't you try the truth? I'm telling the truth. Look, Sheriff, I don't know anything. 
I gotta go to work. I don't want to be late. You won't get there at all unless you start cooperating. Ask anybody. Anita cooperates. All right, let's start all over. Slater was here last night. He talked with Logan. What about him? I don't know. Get packed. What for? I'm gonna float you out of town. You've got just about ten minutes. Why? I don't need a reason. Oh, look, Sheriff. Um, it was that cattleman's business. Rustling. $1,300 doesn't grow on trees. Now, Dan's been trying to... Now, how's he going to make $1,300? Well, isn't that what he does for a living? Bringing rustlers? Gets paid $300 a piece. You said $1,300. Why? <laughs> I meant $300. Get your stuff. Can't I stay here? I don't have anywhere to go. Tell me about last night. I'll give you one minute to make up your mind. Later, offered Dan Logan a thousand dollars to stop Jess Hill from rustling his cattle. You can go to work now, Miss Levis. Shots in the air. The rest of us will catch up. The Cattlemen's Association has offered a thousand dollars reward. Another thousand's been donated by Jesse's friends. Now, all of you know what Logan can do with a gun, so don't let this reward get in your eye. All right, let's go. Another Apache trick? Yeah. Comes in handy when you're back shooting kids. I don't believe that. You're the only one who doesn't. Shots came from somewhere near that gully over there. How is the kid? He's got a good chance. I hope so. Seemed like a nice kid when I met him. Dan, the sheriff's looking for you. I know. He's leading the posse I've been tracking. You got a $2,000 reward on your head. You're going to have to come into town with me. Sheriff's a fair man. He'll give you an even break. He believes I did it. With $2,000 on my head, I'd never make it to town. Dan, I'm going to have to take you in. You'll have to kill a friend to do it. <laughs> up to you sometime.
You said we were going to be alone. Get out of here, Charlie. Well, look, I don't know who you think you are, but get out. this rustling stopped. 300 wouldn't do it. I figured a thousand would. But I didn't tell him to shoot anybody. Especially not a, an 18-year-old boy. He thought he was shooting at me. We all know that, Jesse. Well, what kind of a bullet you take out of the boy's body? 4440, same as Logan's. All right, same as Logan, same as yours, same as mine. We've all got 4440s. So, what are you getting at? Out by the ravine where the boy was shot, I found these shell casings. 4440s. What about them? Take a look at the primer. Uh, scarred up. Probably a splintered firing pin. How's the firing pin on Logan's rifle? This rifle never fired those shells. Take a look at this one. Firing pin split almost in half. Whose is it? I just took it off of Frank Slater's horse. Oh, wait a minute. Why? Don't stand there. You tried to kill my son. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> Slater, you and Logan are going to swap places. on your own cows? I'm sorry, Jesse. So am I. Thank you, Joe. Are you sure you don't want to stick around, huh? A lot of places I haven't seen yet, Joe. Where are you heading? Nowhere. Anywhere. Keep in touch. Keep looking behind you. I'll catch up to you sometime. Dad? Dad, I'm sorry. <laughs> 